everybody, welcome to another episode of B is for Build. We're here working on our camper truck. Have you ever wanted like a camper van, maybe a conversion van that you could sleep in the back of and think, oh man, I'd really like it to be able to tow and oh, I'd like it to be a lot bigger. Well, that's what we thought. So we bought a Ram 3500 wrecked at auction. We repaired the front end and we got it running again. We took the rear trek bed off and built our own floor for our camper. After that, we built walls and now we're gonna frame out all of these walls and build a roof. That's what's in store for today's episode. Stay tuned. Let's start working on our roof box. So we've got this guy built out right here. This is where one of the beds go and it kind of comes over the cab as you can see. We need to firmly attach it from here to up here so it can really hold its weight off of the roof. But before we can do that, we need to prep the roof and the bottom of this because we're not gonna be able to get access back into this when there's just like a one inch air gap after we weld everything in there. So we gotta kind of do all the final finishing work that we want to on the roof and the bottom of this before we weld it in and attach it to our main cage box. So we're gonna go ahead and sheet metal plate the bottom of this so we can insulate it. And then we're gonna um, paint the roof and seam seal our line right here so we don't get any water leakage. All right guys, we got the sheeting on the bottom of the sleeping area and the roof is prepped. Let me jump on the ladder. So we got the roof prepped with some Rhino liner and then we got the drip rails ready to receive the reinforcement uh, weld in piece. So uh, you can see that there's, well, now I gotta go back over there. There's access windows cut in over here. So we're gonna be able to hit everything with the welder through here and then we'll weld the steel right back in uh, where it was when we're done. And it's time now to move this up onto the roof for the last time and it gets welded in. She is up there. Sleeping quarters are up. So here's what we did. We got it on the roof, balanced it on the roof for a second, and then we welded it, kind of did some strip welds in the back over there to our back railing, and then we pulled it up off the roof with this. So now it's time to start attaching this to that a little bit more. So we're gonna put some gussets in here, so this can take a lot of the weight, and then we're gonna do a straight shot from this corner straight up to that corner of the support in the bar. And then we also have our supports that are going into the roof right there that Oscar's got already prepped. So he's gonna weld those in first while we cut this length and get it going in the corner. After we have all that, then this thing is like on the truck for good in its spot. Got our gussets and our supports welded in and the sleeping portion of the up front, like the over cab section is officially hanging out on its own. It is free floating, it is off the lights, it is good. So there's a bunch more uh, one by one that goes into this area and comes down here to help frame out the stuff and then that's before we get into the framing of the rest of the build. So we're just gonna go ahead and start going piece by piece and building all this stuff out.
All right, guys, it's a little bit hard to see, but we got the frame of the top section all built out. It's all fully welded in. It's super strong. We had Oscar standing over here and it was not sagging down and touching the lights or anything like that. So mission accomplished. It's looking good. We're moving on now to the down shoots here. It's like the last real technical part because it, there's a lot of facets here. You can see there's a bunch of facets and a lot of this is just to make it look interesting. So it's not just one big box driving down the road. Uh, so there's a few bars that come in through here and then kind of change angles, connect up here and then work their way back down. And then Oscar also got it started on our wheel wells. These are super beefy because we have a door opening that's right here. So we needed to make this strong to run through the frame with a lot of rigidity because people are gonna be walking, jumping in, jumping out right here a lot so uh, it's two inch on this side and this on the interior where it's not going to be walked on nearly as much it's one inch but you can see it's all boxed out and supported and then um, it's a little bit complicated where it looks bigger over here than it is over there and that's because after the uh, flooring insulation and different stuff like that it kind of changes in the end it'll actually just be a one inch bump in the floor but this gives us room for our tires to actuate Looking good, we're gonna get those next parts welded in. I've been reading in the comments a lot and it's something that I wanted to address. A lot of different people are talking about the weight, worrying about the weight, blah, blah, blah. So we should talk about it a little bit. Is this thing heavy building it all out of steel? Yeah, it, it certainly is. Is it gonna be an issue? On paper, it shouldn't be. Everybody, I think a lot of people have seen the picture of that guy's Dodge Ram 3500 with the frame broken in half. There's a lot of big differences. He had a in-bed kind of camper thing going on, whereas we actually built into the cabin. So he had a lot of stress on one point. He also had 7,500 pounds. And I could tell you because we've lifted, hand lifted everything into here that we're nowhere near that weight limit. But I can also just simplify it a level more for you guys. A lot of what we do on BS for Build is just try stuff have fun with it, see if it's gonna work. Um, I'm not a guy that comes from a ton of money and has uh, unlimited resources. If we had to build this thing out of like fiberglass and aluminum, I can just tell you, first of all, it'd be really hard to source parts. You can't just go buy a bunch of easy sheets of fiberglass. They're radically expensive, we've looked into it. Um, and aluminum is really, really expensive too. If we had to build this whole thing out of fiberglass and aluminum, guys, it just, it wouldn't be a project that would happen. I don't often spend $100,000 in supplies on, on a build. This is just supposed to be like a fun camper thing. We had the truck and we wanted to try our best. So we're building it out of steel. In a world where we had an unlimited budget, would we build it out of different materials? Absolutely. But we think we can make it work with steel. And if we make it work with steel and have fun with it, and it becomes a thing that we can we do use and we use a lot, we can then show you guys that, hey, it's possible to do too. So you can DIY if you want to as well at home. And that's a lot of what we do at Beast for Building, where we come from is like, we sometimes step outside of the the beaten path, the way that everybody else does it. And sometimes it's to save money. And then if we do pull it off and save money, we let all you guys know like, hey, you can do this thing. And then if we fail, we're also very honest about that too. So for us, there's two benchmarks here on this truck. There's the um, government weight rating for the vehicle. We have to stay under that. And I will, we'll pull it up onto a scale guys and we'll just show you the number. So we're gonna have to make sure that we stay under the government weight rating. And then we're also gonna have to drive it and tow with it and make sure that we, you know, our frame doesn't break in half, which I can tell you it's not going to. I'm very confident in that because of the way that we've distributed the weight across the entire frame section. But anyways, could it potentially be too heavy that it's illegal? Yep, then that would be a huge problem. But I, I can tell you right now, we are nowhere near that zone, but I would be lying if I said I'm not a little bit nervous. So that's it. Basically it was make it out of steel because we can afford to make it out of steel or don't make it at all. And I wanted to make it. So that's what we are. Thank you guys for the comments and you are right. There are better ways to build this thing. We just, it's not within the budget for this project. Rather buy one more of these than build a camper. And that's probably why when you see the ones that are for sale on the market, there are bug out vehicle, apocalypse vehicles that sell for a million dollars. Most of the ones, the camper vans, you see the earth roamers and stuff like that, they cost $500,000. There are plenty of these that caught, that are like little in bed campers that you set in your own truck. They cost $250,000. And um, I'd, I, you know, that's house buying money. I'd rather try and see if we could pull it off for 5,000 bucks worth of steel. And like I said, if we figure out that it can be done, then other people can follow in our footsteps. Back to building.
got the next drop down done on both sides. So you can see that this is kind of a facet that, that angles. So as the siding comes in, then it goes like that. And then it continues to go like that towards the front. And then that body line drops down there and drops down through here. Uh, but we've also got this gas fill neck that we've got to get installed right around here. So that's something we've been talking about doing. Um, that's done. And then the wheel arches are also re pretty ready. Now, um, these are harder core steel. Um, and then we're going to, they are going to have plywood on top of them as well for double support and insulation for sound deadening, because it's going to be one of the loudest areas from all the road noise. Um, but these need to be all seam sealed up in case of any water getting around. The um, Raptor liner that we use on the bottom does a good job of filling in small gaps and stuff, but always go the extra mile. Definitely seam seal this stuff up. Seam sealing is really cheap and it helps stopping any rattling too. And it's just real good stuff. So we're going to seam seal these out. And on the, for the next thing, we're going to start working on finishing out these drop downs and boxing all this in, as well as finishing out through here. We're going to use some angle iron to kind of finish supporting the, um, the steel here and boxing in the rest of our floor. Side note, it's the next week and we are this close to getting out of this place. Um, I've got, we've got one final review with the lawyers. We've been working on this now for two and a half months to try and nail down our lease for our new spot, but we're this close and I'm really excited because this is like, this is our forever home. It's a three year long lease. It's a huge building. Should be able to do everything that we need in it. And uh, so I'm getting really excited. We're really close. You might see the next episode of us moving in. It sure would be great. So I've got to email the lawyers one more time. As we finish the faceting as it comes down and then we've got the uh, the rough cut out now for the gas fill cap so we're gonna have to put a door here locking door they'll be able to open and then fill from here but all in all is this broken is this supposed to be like that yeah or is it broken I think there's like little tabs and one of them is broken that's weird why would they do that I don't know I mean, it's like a cutout. It is like a cutout. what the cutout is for. Dodge, why did you do that? That is strange. Oh well, a little decorative rubber trim around this thing and the right bolts and we'll be set. And this is gonna continue to get completely boxed in, so obviously you won't see it from the inside, but that's that's the placement down. Now, we're working on something really exciting. This is one of those stages where we're gonna see a lot of progress happen really fast, so I'm really stoked to get on it. We're basically framing out our sides, our doors, and then we're gonna hopefully, if we have enough material, get up into the roof. So we just did a material run. We've got all the blueprints. We're just gonna be following the 3D design and getting all our uprights and the cross members, framing this thing out, making it look like walls. Hopefully, hopefully, I think this will go pretty fast. My goal is to get most of this framed out in one day. Like four of us will all work on different tasks. Divide and conquer, as we say. Let's get started. We hoped this part is going pretty quickly we're all working together in unison cutting placing welding we've got both the walls in here you're gonna notice a, a weird little box over there that's for our air conditioning unit it's gonna exhaust out through that box so next we're moving on to the uh, the slanted upright parts you're gonna see that we're gonna be skipping this upright right here because that's where our window goes so we need to frame in our window we're gonna get the rest of the uprights in right now Okay, we just finished getting our side like uprights in and then we put that upright in right there running the back and what that does is that mirrors 
this one. Don't ask me why I decided to film like this. This is weird. So now we're on to building out the roof. So it goes from that point. Well, let's let's take that one example. That point across to that point. Then there's some middle supports, like about here and here, that mirror these uh, these frame rails on the on the ground. They kind of go up to the ceiling as well. And then a ton of supports that come crosswise to support it all. We're getting close. I'm probably getting dizzy. Sorry. completed looking good now there's going to be more supports coming in the front and in the roof but that's just to support things like the sheet metal so it doesn't wobble as we go down the road so that's going to be out of angle iron rather than full square bar just to save weight but we did some calculations and you're actually able to pull up online how much a foot each foot of this square bar weighs and i weighed every bit of one inch that we've used so far on this build and it's 460 pounds so it's really not as much as it probably looks and then you got to remember that we removed a gosh very very heavy uh rear truck bed that may probably is about 400 pounds plus now this thing obviously isn't zero but we're probably plus 400 to 500 pounds right now so we're in good shape we just received the final shipment of parts that we need for the front end to do the front end conversion to the 2020 version so i think we're going to get started on that in the next episode make sure to stay tuned subscribe so you don't miss it we'll see you on the next one peace come on